This is the M4 Pro MacBook Pro, and like every other year, you've probably heard Apple say that this is more powerful than ever before. But how much of it is actually better in the real world? We always see a ton of specs listed with each release, benchmarks come out showing how one chip is better than the other, and I know for me personally, the things that I expect to matter often don't, while the stuff that I don't think about twice ends up making the biggest difference. I use my Mac for pretty much everything, whether that's editing these videos, writing code, doing design work, you name it. That usually means I need a bit more out of a laptop than most people, and like every new Mac launch, the M4 Pro came with its usual round of spec bumps, some of which I was genuinely excited about. Thunderbolt 5 was probably the headline for me, along with better performance even on the base configs. There was improved battery life and a few smaller things like an upgraded screen and webcam, but the thing with all of this is, it's rarely black and white. Some improvements are obvious right away, others are super subtle, and some might even feel like a step backward. It really isn't until you start using these things day in and day out that the true value starts to reveal itself, which is kind of what I've been figuring out, and that's what we're digging in today. So with that said, let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. If you own any M-Series Mac, even if you have an old M1 from five years ago, chances are it's probably still a great computer. I know tons of folks who are still doing fairly demanding things on older M1 or M2 machines, and while we see a lot of numbers or charts saying how much better this year's Mac is over another, I don't know that that's entirely meaningful in the same way that it might have been 5 or 10 years ago. It's not that they haven't improved, because I can tell you without a doubt that an M4 Pro MacBook has a ton of features and added power that aren't in the older versions, but it's more of a matter of the things that you do to really notice those differences, so let's talk about what sets this particular MacBook apart. The unit that I have here is the base 14-inch M4 Pro variant with a 12-core CPU and 16-core GPU, 512 gigs of storage, and 24 gigs of memory. So right off the hop, even if you ignore the chipset, you're getting an extra 6 gigs of memory over the previous base M3 Pro at the same $1999 USD price, which is a huge win. Models with 16 or 18 gigs have held up fine for general use, and even some heavier workloads, and as long as you're using them for singular tasks, they can still do almost everything, but over the last year or so, I've noticed memory usage ramping up, where if I've got a lot going on and I'm multitasking, machines with 16 gigs like this MacBook Air occasionally run into out of memory warnings or see relatively high memory pressure. I'm gonna get into actual performance here in a minute or two, but at 24 gigs of RAM, I rarely ever run into any issues, and this is probably my new safe baseline for multitasking with a somewhat demanding workflow. Think things like photo and video editing, graphic design, coding, those kinds of things. Similarly, 512 gigs of storage is probably good enough for general usage, but if you're doing the things that I just mentioned, especially building mobile apps and Xcode or Android Studio, where maybe you're downloading a bunch of different simulators or emulators and building multiple projects, that can chew through storage. I've personally been hovering close to capacity a couple of times, and I usually try and alleviate that by using external storage, but probably the better option there would just be to bump up the internal storage to a terabyte, which is somewhat steep at a $200 USD upgrade, but in my opinion, it's a lot more meaningful than bumping up the chip spec for the same cost. I've used both this base 12-core CPU, 16-core GPU M4 Pro chip in my Mac MacBook Pro, and the 14-core CPU, 20-core GPU one above it in my Mac Mini, and honestly, performance between them feels almost exactly the same. Both are obviously going to handle basic things like productivity-related tasks just fine, but CPU-heavy tasks like coding are indistinguishable. I've recently offloaded some of the work that I've been doing on that Mac Mini and my Mac Studio with the M3 Ultra for that matter to this M4 Pro MacBook, and it's been smooth as butter with absolutely no hangups. Video editing also feels super performant and snappy, where you won't see nearly as fast of render speeds as a Max or an Ultra chip, 
Those other chips have multiple encoding engines, where the Pro chip only has one, but it's still by no means slow, and if you're just a solo content creator with basic needs, you're gonna have a really hard time distinguishing between the base M4 Pro and the models above it. On the GPU side of things, this is one area where things have gotten a lot better since the M series was introduced with additions like hardware enabled ray tracing and dynamic caching last year. Apps like Fusion and Blender run fine so long as you're not doing anything too crazy. Even gaming is decent. And although you will see a slightly bigger gap between this base M4 Pro and the higher spec M4 Pro in terms of smoothness and frame rates, your best bet is probably either to stick with the base M4 Pro chip or upgrade to an M4 Max to notice any meaningful difference. In fact, just taking a step back for a second, I've been lucky enough to have tested out some Apple Silicon competitors in the Snapdragon X Elite and AMD Ryzen Max chipsets, and that's given me a different level of appreciation for the MacBook Pro. With the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 in this Asus Z13 Flow that I have here, AMD directly references competing with the M4 Pro, and while it does actually do better in certain aspects like gaming, it struggles in others, and top to bottom, in my opinion, the M4 Pro is just a much better package. Unlike the Z13 Flow, fan noise is stayed at a minimum even under heavier loads, the system runs cooler, and the battery life is still much better than most PC competitors. Although, there are some differences there this year. Apple says that you'll get up to 4 more hours of battery life on the M4 Pro versus the M3 Pro, and while that can be the case if you're sticking to things like web browsing or media consumption, I have noticed that more demanding tasks can see the battery life decrease faster over the previous version, which has to do with the makeup of the chip itself. The base M4 Pro has 8 performance cores, where the M3 Pro only has 5, which when engaged will drain the battery a touch faster than the efficiency cores. That's not only true here, but also in the M4 Max chip, where you'll see the battery life take a bit of a dip there as well. With that said, this does still have a 72 watt hour battery, which is much bigger than the 53 watt hour one in the MacBook Air. And I get well over a full day of use on the Pro with a combination of both light and resource heavy tasks. So absolutely no complaints there, and in the grand scheme of things, it's still phenomenal. Now, if you're using external accessories like this portable Thunderbolt 5 SSD drive that I have here, you can expect to see about an extra 15 to 25% drop in battery life over the same time period, depending on how much the accessory is in use or how much power it draws. And speaking of external accessories, the ports on the M4 Pro are probably where we've seen some of the biggest on-paper improvements on these M-Series Macs. New this generation is the introduction of Thunderbolt 5, which basically has double the potential transfer speed of the previous version, and can support higher refresh rate displays with better resolution. And I say that these are the best on paper improvements because up to this point that hasn't really meant much. This Thunderbolt 5 SSD that I've got here, while it is much faster than the Thunderbolt 4 one that I was previously using, hasn't really had any perceivable impact on how I use the drive itself. And you probably won't feel the full effect of Thunderbolt 5 until we maybe see Apple release a 5K 120Hz display. That's been kind of floated around as a rumor for something that's in the pipe that maybe we'll see at WWDC, but I do kind of have my doubts about that. The thing is, the only machines that would be able to run a display with that spec would be these Thunderbolt 5 machines, so Apple would be really limiting who could effectively use a product like that. Still, if you're picking one of these up, it's nice to know that you've got Thunderbolt 5 there for the future, and I've generally been really happy with the port selection, where I've had no issues with the ports themselves or seen anywhere around the edges on the Space Black variant that I've got here. Just keep in mind that I've been kind of using this off and on with my other machines, and over time, chances are you're going to start to see a little silver ring around the ports that you use a lot, but mine still looks good as new, even with it being bumped and banged around here and there. The hinge still has really smooth motion with no wear, there's no scratches on the screen, which by the way is one of my favorite things about this Mac. Just a note here, you can now get a nano texture finish on the MacBook Pro screen for reducing reflections and a lot of people love it, but 
I still prefer a glossy finish as I mostly use mine indoors and I just find it has a bit more clarity. Beyond that though, having the 120Hz ProMotion LED panel is nice for smooth scrolling over the 60Hz panels that you see in the MacBook Air or on the studio display, but the bigger difference for me is with the actual picture, where you see better contrast and colors that really pop with HDR content that you just don't get on those other screens. The M4 Pro MacBook also is supposed to be brighter than the previous version, going up to 1000 nits in SDR content from 600 last year, but that is supposed to be only outdoors, and still to this day, I have a really tough time seeing any meaningful difference there, and the same goes for the built-in webcam right above it, where the M4 Pro has an improved 12 megapixel camera, but it really doesn't make much of a difference. It's still fine for calls, and the built-in mics on here sound great, as do the internal speakers on here, which are still the best that I've heard on any laptop, but those haven't really changed much from previous years. I would say that in this particular iteration of the MacBook Pro, the biggest thing that you're gonna notice in this base M4 Pro is that spec floor on the memory being bumped up, where I have felt an actual meaningful difference versus the base M3 Pro from last year. I see less memory pressure, less memory warnings, and some apps just work better because of it, but just keep in mind that those are in very specific instances. I know that you can look at benchmarks and point out the exact differences year to year with each MacBook, but with general usage and for most things that are relying strictly on processing power, an M4 Pro MacBook Pro is going to feel largely the same as the M3 Pro and probably even an M2 Pro for that matter. Thunderbolt 5 I think will play a bigger role in what separates this maybe in a year or two down the road and don't get me wrong, there are going to be specific things that will make a difference from one generation to the next for some people. That might be loading complex scenes in Blender, using specific audio tools, or even gaming to some extent, but I really don't think that we need to see huge changes in these machines, because they're still head and shoulders above everything else. And despite the iterative nature of each release, we have seen meaningful upgrades over the years. Processing power has improved a crazy amount since the M1. Ports have improved, not just with Thunderbolt versions, but with things like HDMI compatibility, external monitor support, and so on. And the MacBook Pro is still hands down the most well-built, capable machine out there. With all that being said, I am really curious. If you've got an M-Series Mac and you're using it as your daily driver, I would love to know how you're liking it and if you feel like you're having any pain points where maybe it's not enough and it's time to upgrade, or on the flip side, where you've been overly impressed with it. So feel free to drop a comment down below and let me know, but that's all I have for you today. If you found this video useful or enjoyable, feel free to hit that like button. If you'd like to see more tech related content or help me develop a physical AI device that tracks how often your cat judges you, Please subscribe, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next upload.